So you want to buy a P-51 Mustang, but don't have several million dollars to commit to the endeavor. Maybe a replica is for you. Today we're talking Mustang replicas that you can build at home and fly yourself for a tiny fraction of the original thing. The Stuart S-51 Mustang. This guy's been around a while, designed in the late 60s, and finally wrapped up kit production in the 90s. Though, over 70 kits were sold, and only 20-ish were completed. So there are still some out there waiting for you to find them. Jim and Peggy Stewart, the S-51 creators, prioritized accurate replication. Here's a real P-51D next to a Stuart 51. I know it's hard to tell, but these are actually drawings, not photos from some high-end camera as they appear. Rest assured, they are very similar. The power loading and roll rate are identical to the original P-51. They even used a fabric-covered rudder and the same airfoil design as the original. Even though the Stuart factory would cut and drill most of the parts for you, build times range from 3 to 5,000 hours or more. For reference, you can build an RV-8 in 2,000 to 2,500 hours. Flying the S-51 is a joy, albeit difficult. 400 horsepower homemade tail wheel isn't for the faint of heart, though a 1600 horsepower P51 isn't either, so they replicated that too. The Titan T51 is another metal closely replicated P51 that looks and feels similar to the Stuart S1. What's neat about the Titan is that it has an option to be built with a fixed landing gear and a 100 horsepower Rotex engine. In this configuration, it's qualified to be flown by sport pilots in the USA. It can also be built to qualify as an ultralight or a microlight in other countries. It will also happily accommodate up to 250 horsepower and retracts for a more Mustang-y experience. From a build and performance experience, the Titan has a lot of overlap with the Stuart Mustang. The Mustang is one heck of an airplane. The fact that it's a Mustang replica is just the cherry on top. This is a 640 horsepower monster. Thunder Mustang LLC claims that it's the fastest piston kit plane ever produced. That is accurate. The Quest Air Venture is pretty quick. The Lance Air 4P will get you a speeding ticket for sure. Thunder Mustang is considerably faster. But how's that possible? Well, by burning a great deal of fuel. The FEDEC controlled 640 horsepower Falconer V12 sips 23 gallons or so in cruise and returns about 200 150 knots. It holds the top speed record for a naturally aspirated piston at 330 knots. Thunder Mustang is as close to the real experience as you're going to get in a replica. Its power to weight ratio is only off by about half a pound per horsepower. The downside is twofold. $400,000 to get it built is a lot, and 8 to 10,000 hours estimated build time is extreme. If you get in a 20 hour week working on your kit, and that's a lot, and never skip a day, you're still looking at nearly 9 years of build time. If you're serious about building one of these, best to enlist some help. Teamwork makes the dream work. Finally, the only reason I clicked on this video. I know. The SW51 is so hot right now. Okay, why? A few reasons. First, it looks cool. It's totally carbon fiber, and they stuck little rivets and screws on it to make it look more authentic. Okay, fine. The other planes we talked about today also have rivets and screws, but what they don't have is the strength of carbon fiber. Another reason this plane is cool, and honestly one of the main reasons it's getting so much attention right now, in my opinion, is the paint job. The metallic dark gray they painted this demo plane in is stunning. Round of applause to whoever made that happen. I know you probably thought that this image was another high definition photo of the real thing, but no, it's just another drawing by me. Don't feel bad, it's hard to discern. Treat yourself though, when the video is over, and look up the real one. Looks aside, this is still a slick little plane. It runs a very modern and expensive Rotex 915 IS, and it boasts performance numbers that make you go, really? It's no secret that some manufacturers publish performance specs are dreamt up by the marketing department. I'm not saying this is the case here at all. I honestly don't know. As soon as I get the chance to fly the S51 up to 15,000 feet and test it out, I'll post my findings. Scale wings? Call me! 180 knots at 15,000 feet would be pretty great. In any case, whatever the in real life numbers are for this plane, we have every reason to believe that they would be great. The JMB VL3 offers a 915 IS, and they claim 200 knots, and that's a side by side. So 180 knots in a greasy tandem is certainly plausible, but it is expensive. Each of these planes offer a back seat that feels close to a piggyback ride from the pilot. Half a mil is a lot to spend on what is essentially a single seater in the long term. I don't know how many people will sign up for round two riding shotgun. Little to no baggage capacity as well. I love a good replica. It's understandable that the original airplane cost a lot of money. Simple supply and demand look after that. All the planes we talked about today are excellent in my opinion. When you compare them to the original Mustang, you get like what, three quarters of the fun? At least half. For something like 10% of the price? Possibly less? Anyway, that's comparing them to real Mustangs.
things. Where the wheels start to fall off is when you start to compare them to regular airplanes. If you look at the mission profile of these planes and the cost, would you rather have an extra 300? Because you could get one brand new, proper two-seater, and plus 10, minus 10 Gs, and built in a German factory by German engineers. Just saying. You would have to really want that P-51 look, because that's what it is, looks. I mean, if they could shoot down a Messerschmitt 109, maybe we'd be talking. But anyways, Mustang replicas are very cool. Much cheaper than the original Mustang, for sure. For a home-built two-ish place piston single, they're very expensive. That's Mustang replicas. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you want to be my friend. See you in the next.